All right, so we're moving on to unit A of AP stats, which has to do with inference for categorical data chi-squared tests. Okay, so this, if you're going to guess, is very similar to significance tests for proportions and means. I mean, the rest of AP stats is pretty similar. So if you get one down, you pretty much get the others down too. Uh, but there are some nuances you have to know with chi-squared. But this thing is like only 2 to 5% of your AP exam, so it's not that really, really that important. You're probably not going to do a full chi-squared test for your FRQs. This is more likely to show up as multiple choice, okay? So the first type of test for chi-squared is a chi-squared test for goodness of fit, okay? The key question I like to ask myself is, does a sample's observed distribution significantly differ from the expected distribution? So that's a mumbo jumbo, you know, jargon term, but let's think about it in terms of something more simple like M&Ms, right? So let's say I have the, I don't know, whatever company owns M&Ms, they claim that it's like 10% red M&Ms, 13% brown M&Ms, et cetera, right? So then I order a bunch of M&Ms and then I, you know, open them up and then I check the distributions, right? I count them up, right? I'm trying to see if my sample, the percentage of X color of M&Ms matches with what the company claims, right? So that is an example of where you would use chi-squared test for goodness of fit, okay? Now, something that actually differs between, whoa, surprise, difference between chi-squared tests and the, the significance tests for, say, proportions or means, is you actually don't have a parameter of interest and you also do not have a sample statistic, okay? Instead, we're gonna jump straight into the hypotheses, your null and your alternative hypothesis, then your assumptions and conditions, uh, so a random sample, the 10% condition, your large counts, except now, instead of it being above 10, it has to be equal to or above five. I don't know why that is. I mean, whoever created the AP stats curriculum or whoever invented statistics, you can ask them. Uh, name of the statistics is chi-squared test for goodness of fit. Your test statistic, I guess something cool you can know about this is that a higher test statistic means a higher discrepancy from the expected distribution, which makes sense, right? Because it is your observed value minus your expected count over your expected count it's like squared and stuff. So if your observed value, if this value, uh, I should not have drawn that arrow. If this one is very high, right? So that means like I'm expecting a value of like 10, but I get like 1,000, like 1, then my difference will be super large. That gets squared. And so a higher test statistic means there's higher discrepancy. And, you know, if I'm talking about terms of like M&Ms, then the M&Ms people, they're probably not telling the truth, right? There's a huge discrepancy. Now we're talking back to degrees of freedom. So instead of our sample size minus one, very simple now, it's just the number of categories we have minus one. So in terms of M&Ms, it's like each color of M&Ms, right? If I have like, I don't know, seven colors of M&Ms, then it'd be seven minus one, degrees of freedom is six. Then we're gonna obtain our p-value, you can use table C, or you can just use your calculator, pretty simple. Then you're going to make a decision, are you going to reject or fail to reject HO? And then you're going to conclude in context. Number when you're concluding in context, you want to refer back to HA and say HA explicitly in context. Our next test is a chi-square test for homogeneity. It's kind of hard to say. I always said it as homogeneity, but that's not like not the same thing. And then our next one is a chi-square test for association or independence. Um, so you'll notice that this is pretty short, and that's because between these two, there's only like two differences, Okay. So the difference is, is uh, how you identify them, the name, and your null hypothesis and stuff. So let's start off with the uh, chi-squared test for homogeneity or homogeneity, whatever. Uh, the key question here is, do two or more populations share the same distribution for a single categorical variable? Okay, so this is very important. You have one variable of interest, all right? So how you're gonna identify this is you're gonna have two or more samples with only one variable. Okay, if I haven't made this more clear, it's one variable of interest. So for your hypotheses, your null is gonna be, there is no difference within that one variable between your two or more groups. Your alternative is there is a difference in that one variable between all your groups. The name is chi-squared test, blah, blah, blah. And so now we need to dive into the other things, okay? because everything else is pretty much the same between these two tests, okay? So now, like before, we're gonna go into our assumptions and conditions, right? You gotta have your random sample and selection and assignment, your 10% condition, your large counts equal to or greater than five, and then this is a little different for your uh, degrees of freedom. 
it is now the number of rows you have minus one times the number of columns you have minus one, okay? This is because you have a two-way table, right? And then when you're dealing with that, that changes your degrees of freedom. And then your expected counts formula also changes. Now you can plug this into your calculator and do like matrices to get it done, um, but or you can just use this formula. You can pick either way. There's really no like better way to do it in this case, which is your row total times your column total all divided by your table total, okay? Your test statistic is the same as your goodness of fit. Um, again, don't manually calculate it, right? It's just good to know that formula in case it shows up on like a multiple choice for some reason, which is very, very unlikely because this unit is very, very unlikely to show up. Um, but just in case, just recognize it for those multiple choice questions. And then for your conclusion, reject or fail to reject HO just like before, conclude cannot conclude HA, and then just adjust the context based on each respective test, right? So when we're talking about the context part, make sure you are going back to your null and your alternative hypothesis. So to cap the video, we're just gonna talk about the uh, other stuff for our chi-square test for association or independence. Key question here is, is there an association between two categorical variables? Okay, so now we have only one sample, one sample, but with multiple variables, okay? So our null here would be there is no association between uh, our first variable in context and our second variable in context between our in, in our one sample. And then our alternative is, we're just changing one word here, association between these uh, variables. And the name is just chi-square test for association and everything else, guess what, is the exact same thing. So that does for everything you need to know for units eight of AP stats.